Hi, I'm Postiage and welcome to this Path Exo guide on how to use sextants. This video requires you to have some knowledge of maps and shaping. In this guide I will try to answer the following questions. What are sextants? What modifiers are there? And how can I use sextants? Also known as sextant blocking. First off, what are sextants? Sextants are a type of currency in Path of Exile that allow you to add a modifier to a map multiple times. As opposed to more traditional means, where a mod will only apply for one map. For example, using an ARP of transmutation on a map will add mods to that item that will only apply to that particular item. Whereas, using a sextant will apply a mod that will last for the next three maps that you run. And, as an added bonus, it will also work for any map that happens to be in range in the Atlas. For instance, when you'd look at the Catacombs, you would see that Val City, Shore and High Gardens are within the range of the Sextant. Another added bonus with Catacombs is that it is within range of Omex Sanctum and Val City. These may be unique maps, but they will also be affected by this Sextant. Path of Exile knows three types of sextants, the first one being the Apprentice Cartographer's Sextant. This sextant will only work for you in maps of tier 1 through 5. The second one is the Journeyman Cartographer's Sextant, which will work for maps of tier 6 through 10, but they will also work on tier 1 through 5. Though I would not advise doing so, as the previous sextant is cheaper than this one. Finally, there's the Master Cartographer's Sextant. This will work for maps of tier 11 through 16, but just as with the Journeyman's Cartographer's Sextant, it will work for all previous tiers as well. Maps also indicate which sextant will work on them, because the coloring of the map is equal to that to the coloring of the sextant. Tiers 1 through 5 are colored white, tiers 6 through 10 are colored yellow, and tiers 11 through 16 are colored red. As a side note, you cannot shape the Shaper's Realm. There is a total of 39 modifiers you can get from Sextants. Some are of course better than others and some you might never want to see ever. There is also 10 of those that have an item or monster level requirement for them to be activated. The Wikia page houses all of these modifiers in a nice list. There is also a Reddit post which has these modifiers ranked into a tiered list. Both of these links can be found in the description. Just as a general indication, you are always looking for modifiers that increase pack size, modifiers that will increase item quantity, or modifiers that will add a certain mechanic to your maps, such as breaches, strong boxes, or even Xena, so that you can get a, another map inside of your map. Finally, let's talk about sextant blocking. I will show a video example in just a little bit, but let's first talk about the theory regarding this. A rule for sextants is that a map can't have two of the same modifiers. So this means you can't roll a modifier that is already affecting a map in range. I will show this with a little example. Say we have a map here in the center. Let's call it map A. Map A has three maps connected to it. Maps B, C, and D. Those three maps are the only maps that are in range for map A to be affected with a sextant modifier. So let's start off with map B. B can be affected by the three maps surrounding it. Map A, the one we want to run, and two other maps E and F. Let's say we use a sextant on map E, and we happen to get bad mod number 1. We do the same for F, and we happen to get bad mod number 2. This means that map B will not be able to roll bad mod number 1 or bad mod number 2. This already increases your odds of getting a positive modifier. However, there is two more maps associated with this example. If we go to map C and D, and they also happen to be have two maps associated with them. Then we can also roll bad mods number 3, 4, 5 and 6 on them. 
And as such, we can no longer roll bad mod number 5 or 6 on map C, bad mod number 3 or 4 on map D. As such, whenever we will be using sextons on D, C or B, we have a much higher chance of getting a positive mod as opposed to when you just do it without. Enough theory, let's see this in action. Say we would like to run Mod Geyser. Keep in mind that you will generally only do this for a map that you have shaped. First, we have to find out which map modifiers can hit our map, Mod Geyser. You can see this by hovering over the map with a sextant. Any map that is within the circle will be able to hit our map directly with its modifiers. The maps that can affect Mud Geyser are Ramparts, Pier, and Spider Forest. Identify which maps can affect the three aforementioned ones. As before, you can find out which map is in range by hovering over them with a sextant. In our case, it's these maps. Now we start rolling modifiers on our maps. For this example, I won't re-roll any maps. We rolled a mod on tower. To summarize, it's more physical damage. This means that Pier, up to the left of it, will not be able to roll that modifier. We do the same for all maps that can hit Ramparts, Pier, and Spider Forest. But make sure that they do not hit Mud Geyser. As you can see, Wharf is not within range of Ramparts. On the other hand, Beacon is. So always make sure you check all the maps that are somewhat close, because even if they're not connected by the Atlas lines, they could still be used for sextant blocking. Now that we have our sextant blocks in place, we can start rolling our other maps. For these maps, we are looking for positive modifiers. And now the Atlas is set up for running Mud Geysers. Concluding, Sextons are a great way to get more efficiency out of your mapping by increasing pack sizes or forcing other modifiers to appear on your maps. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope you were able to learn a thing or two from this guide. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more guides from me. I also stream Pad of Excel on Twitch. Consider following me on there. Link is in the description. Mm -hmm.